Hey, my name is Chris Evans. I'm one of the TDs here at Animation. I've been animating for about seven years, and I gotta say, I've never worked any place like this. With the bloodhound on his heels, my, 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 the well blood dry, and the crows in the cornfield. Golly, golly, hip and holler, my own hip and my teeth. The process is, is pretty simple. You start with the script, and then you record the actor's voices. And then you, you start crafting uh, with hand-drawn storyboards. You start uh, crafting what, what it's going to look like. See? On time, just like I said. Right. That's, the, that's the animator's guide to uh, starting to build the physical performance. And in this movie, we had a lot of characters. There was probably over 200 characters designed I would say actually that made it into the movie, there was about 165. Creating a character does start off with still 2D, still drawing and sketches. Um, what the director has in his mind, he tries to tell the artist and they'll put it on paper. And then uh, it's the job of the modeler to, to take that and bring it into the, the computer world. And um, they'll usually have, they'll, they'll come up with model sheets so they have different views, profile views of the character, like you know from the side or, or the front so the uh, modeler can then know what it looks like from different angles. And then they'll start modeling it uh, in the computer, pulling points, trying to get to match up to the drawing, and then that'll go for, through uh, several approvals back and forth. So we get rid of the ones we don't like. <laughs> I think these are both great, and I don't, know they need, I don't think they need any more of this. I come in and I start get my hands in there and trying to establish what they could look like. And I offer, usually, uh, depending on the character, two to three options to the director. Um, and then we look at it, opens discussion. A lot of times, um, sometimes it'll be something that'll be approved on the spot. Sometimes I have to go back to the drawing board and then revisit some, some, some revisions. Here you're seeing um, the initial model, which was grayed out, and I've, I've gone in and actually painted where we could have uh, hair. This is showing us different color variations on the eye. At the time, uh, one was to be cataract and the other one to be just uh, normal. So basically, you know, there's some, some different hues that we were looking at. Well, this is Danny Glover's character uh, in the movie Miles. So you have your, your actual model on the bottom, and then I obviously brought his photograph in. And one of the things I noticed is that he, he likes to keep a little stubble and try to incorporate that into his character. Um, so that is there. Uh, did try a gold tooth, uh, which did not get approved. Well, we had 109 versions of Otis. And it wasn't frustrating for anybody by, by no means. We knew that was going to happen. Yes, Steve was very, very involved. All the main characters were like that, every single one of them. Cabbage Patch is a, is a pretty important scene in the film, although, although short. I uh, wanted to convey beauty and, and, and really elegant shots. So. Did a lot of research on the way of, of ground and skies and, and colors and what was gonna really sell that. Um, in the way of the junkyard, I actually pulled a lot of the crew uh, and we went to several junkyards, which uh, was very interesting. A lot of great things came out of it. And then it was a matter of uh, just starting to create, trying to come up with a style that uh, we felt hadn't been done in CG before. It's a very curvy, round location, um, which goes well with the characters. Whereas if you look at a lot of other CG films, it's, it's more architectural. And we even tried to take the square architectural stuff out of the buildings. The buildings have little warp to them, little wonkiness, what we call wonkiness in the industry, where lines, instead of going like that, they, they've got some curves to it. Then you've got the props, and props generally are things like cars or anything that a character touches, picks up. So anything else that has to move within the set, within the environment, that all has to be created. The basic role of the animation supervisor on a 3D film is to work with the animators uh, in a given sequence and to sort of capture the performance that the director wants on a scene-per-scene -scene basis. He's probably more dynamic if he ran he the left right toward, towards the camera. Right toward yeah. camera. He, could, yeah. he could leave right out, woo, you know, yeah. right out the, you see him trying to get away, we just see him leap out. <laughs> To begin the, the sequence, we'll sit down with uh, 
uh, sequence first, and we'll go through it and decide which animators would be best for what shot. We'll cast them based on their talents. And um, so you go through that, then you get your animators together, together, go through it with Steve. He'll tell you what he's looking for. Um, more specifically, he'll know, like for this one, he wanted Otis to really be like off balance. And so you'd show it to him, he'd be like, no, more. It's gonna be fun, it's, it'll be funnier if he's more off balance. You know, so the animators will go back and put that in. One of the biggest challenges as an animator is to, to convey the proper feeling that the director wants. You know, if there's a scene, you know, where something happened to someone, you really need the character to, you really, you need to convey to the audience that, you know, this is a sad moment, it's a touching moment. You want the audience to feel something. There's one scene where Daisy and uh, Otis are lying down on these, uh, uh, Shay's lounge chairs, and it's just the subtlety of the eye blinks, the, the way he moves his eyebrows. Those are the ones that are so tough to do, but if they're believable, you forget you're looking at an animated cow, and I think there's a lot of that in this movie. The way the motion capture system works is we suit up the capture subject that we're going to be capturing with a Lycra suit and we attach to, the, to that uh, these hyper-reflective markers. The way these work are much the same way as street signs or the reflective material you get in some sports clothes. The cameras have got little red circles around them which shine out light which these markers reflect back. There's so much that has to be decided that ultimately, that's why I think if you can get a base of what the, what the general goal is, look-wise, it allows everyone to be creative within that, you know, within that context. So having, having this goal of a, a living storybook allows everybody to put their spin on it and come up with their own specifics. So when it comes to approval time, you know, for the most part, I'm already looking at something that's in line with what the, the common goal is. Here we go. Oh. We're going to the other building because one, one large building is not enough to house the talent that we have on this picture. Quick game of fake foos every day. Well, 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 look what we have here. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> This may be a bad idea, but eliminate his hands. <laughs> I mean, I, I said it may not be the best idea, but I think we, I think it's important we throw it out there. Just let's see. Yeah. The problem's gone. It might create a new one. Interacting with Steve-O is a is a is definitely a fun time. It's uh, you know it's it, he's a great uh, piece of reference in terms of just. Uh, performance and things like that. He is, uh, he, I mean, he's a funny guy. So we have, a, and this is a funny film. So several of the scenes and things like that. If uh, if he wanted to say, oh, this is exactly how Freddy should do this weird thing, he'll just get up and do it. And after you know several minutes of laughter and whatnot, you sort of uh, sort of get back to um, okay. So th this is how we should be. This is how we should behave here, or whatever. But uh, but yeah, it's definitely a, a good time because. Uh, you know, he keeps it he keeps it entertaining as well as work. <laughs> I like to tip the crew. When I, whenever somebody does a really good shot, it's like you know. <laughs> the technology's gotten to a point where it's it's a lot better for an artist. It's a lot easier for an artist because you're uh, a lot earlier on. You're always fighting the technology, which takes away some of your your creative juices. You're always getting frustrated by technology and not being able to put out there what you want to based upon the limitations of that technology. Now it's to a point where um, if you have a crazy idea in your head, it's, it's 
becoming a lot simpler to be able to, to, to animate that in the computer. Well, I started my career in 2D, and, and when I first entered 3D, I'm blown away what we can do now. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's endless, and the amount of uh, people that are able to get involved in 3D even is, is, is great, because, you know, early on, it was a pretty selected view and very, very expensive. I think it's a performance thing. I, I think the, enjoy, the enjoyment of animation is a sort of in, in creating a performance and sort of bringing things to life that you otherwise uh, wouldn't be able to in, in your own way and what you can lend to a scene it's a little part of yourself when you're animating a scene it's sort of like you it's it's almost as if you're putting yourself on the screen and that's and when it, when it when you're happy with it if it comes together it's pretty uh, rewarding it's like uh, it's like having a baby that's there's no other way to describe it because when you see it all come together textured and I mean it doesn't even have to be moving <laughs> you know the first time you see it you're like Yes. When people, without being judged, or, oh, I think this could be better, it's really more of a question of, can you, can you raise that? What would we do to make it better? I think the best part of people just clicks in. And it gets more exciting, because then you're, you're playing in this, this land of, well, it's already really good, but is there something else, you know? Back to work! Back to work! <laughs> surf culture here in San Clemente and uh, Lower Trestles especially, which is one of the best surf spots in North America, makes this a truly amazing place to work. Uh, I surf every day. Uh, it's been just uh, a wonderful way to uh, refocus myself and... Uh... Ah! <laughs> and that was my boss, Jason. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> anyway, it's a blast. And my coworkers are great too. <laughs>